Hey guys, welcome to week five of cycle three. Um, today we continue on with our understanding and study of different body parts and systems. Um, this far we've learned all kinds of cool stuff and again each of these um, simple experiments point back to a really complicated um, human body and um, the work of an intelligent creator who made all these little details work together. Um, so today we are studying hearing and how the ear works as well as our skin and in a basic form kind of how it works. And so um, our first experiment is on sound and direction of sound. We want to know, first of all, the question or the purpose of um, number 72 in our Van Cleves would be, how do we hear? If kids say, from our ears, well, how do our ears work? Does anybody have any hypotheses on how our ears work? Um, what have we already learned about how different body parts send messages to our brain? Um, and that's through nerves. And so, um, so kind of get some background um, questions and get their minds thinking about our ears, how they work, how they send messages to our brain to actually transmit um, audio waves, um, sound waves, um, and that kind of thing. So sound, get that kind of going in their brain, and then direction of sound. How do we know when something falls, how do we know where to turn our head or where to look? Um, how do we know the direction of the sound? And see if you have any guesses or some thoughts with that. You can think of them a little background information on our ears. And again, show that you could show them a picture if you have a book or print out a picture of the ear and the ear canal. Um, there's three parts to your ear. You've got your outer ear, your middle ear, and then your inner ear. So sound waves travel through this air, through the molecules, they bounce all around until they enter our external ear canal. Um, and they go through the little canal, still bouncing along. They're, think of them as moving. Um, and then they hit our middle ear, which is our tympanic membrane. And they cause that, it's kind of like the top of a drum. That's why they call it your eardrum. It's similar to the top of a drum and it causes that to vibrate. And so you've got your outer ear, this little sound wave's going, it hits the eardrum or tympanic membrane, which causes it to vibrate. That then um, hits your middle ear where there's three little bones. And so as the tympanic membrane vibrates, it causes these little bones to vibrate and hit each other. As those, that little vibration continues on into your inner ear where then those little bones are connected to an area of fluid and these little cilia or little hair um, in your inner ear, which then go through this little canal and send messages through the auditory nerve to your brain. It's pretty crazy and cool and um, how God even thought up that process of how that works. Um, so it takes these moving sound waves causing vibration on each little part of our ear um, even through fluid and little cilia um, to the nerves to our brain to hear. And so you can give them just some basic background. Again, show them a picture of the ear and how it works. And then say, we're going to test this, see if we can hear um, a sound. And then we're going to test if we can tell which direction it's from. Um, and that's really what we're kind of looking at. So to do this, the materials are you'll need a helper. And the book says to snap. We found with snapping that it was kind of inconsistent and so we're going to actually use utensils. So I have two little um, table knives here um, which is probably what you'll have but spoons, forks, anything will do the same act of causing vibration or causing sound waves and it's a little more consistent so we'll make our test a little more accurate. So I have a helper coming to help me today to demonstrate for you what this looks like. So, um, so we have our materials, a helper, and utensils. Or if you, the older kids end up going into pairs, you can have them practice the snapping and you can test if there's a difference using the snapping using, versus using the utensils, if there's a more accurate test um, in your classroom as it was in our classroom. So um, two parts to this. One, um, you're going to have your helper close their eyes. And when they close their eyes, you are going to 
Clang your utensils together in three different parts. In the front, on top, and behind. You're not going side to side. So only in the front, the top, and behind. When you clang your utensils together or snap, you want it to be about six inches from their head. And you want that to be pretty consistent all around their head. And so as you do this, you're gonna assign whether a parent or the students in your class to keep score. We're gonna see how many times our helper gets it right if the sound is in the front, the top, or the back. Um, and then we can, you can go ahead and make your hypotheses, raise your hand if you think she'll know, um, even with her eyes closed, where the sound's coming from. Raise your hand if you think she won't. Um, and so gather your hypotheses and then do your experiment. So I'm gonna do it 10 times. We're gonna see how many times she gets it right. All right, close your eyes really tight. I couldn't keep track of how many she got right and count at the same time. She got about half of them right, um, which was not bad actually. Some of the other trials we've done, we've gotten a lot less. And so then you ask, well, why did she not get it right all the time? What is happening here? Versus if I was to go like this, close your eyes, so which side? Um, left, right. Good. So she's going to get that right every time. And why is that? Well, if we think back to our sound waves, if you picture them traveling through the air, when you're doing it around the top, the front and the back of the head, the sound waves have to travel equal distance to get to the ears. And so by the time they get there, they're the same, um, close to the same amplitude, the same speed, by the time they enter the auditory canal and are doing their thing through the middle and inner ear. If we though bring it to one side, then those travel a much shorter distance to that left ear. And so they send messages through the left ear to the brain before they travel all the way over here to the right ear. And so because it gets there a little faster on the left side, our brain acknowledges and knows Oh, that happened on our left side. Same thing on the right. So that's how we can tell direction of sound is because it enters in faster, gets to our brain faster on that side, and then acknowledges our brain can figure out which direction it came from, which is pretty cool. Thank you, ma'am. The second, um, it's gonna come down here so you can see. The second experiment that we are doing um, on week five is talking about skin. And so with skin, um, the cool thing, well, again, so let's start with our purpose and our question would be how, um, what do you know about skin? Um, is the skin we're born with the same skin we will have when we're older or does our skin change? Um, have you ever had a cut and did that cut stay like that forever or did it heal? Well, how did it heal? Um, again, you can show them a picture of the layers of skin, um, give them a little background information on skin and um, without giving them too much information, um, see what they already know, and then um, talk about our experiment. So our experiment today is very simple, but it makes a visual understanding of, of our skin. So each of you will have a colored piece of paper just because you can see the quote unquote skin flakes a little easier. Um, a piece of coarse sandpaper, you can tell I've already used mine once, um, and then a little chunk of soap. And so you're gonna ask, we're gonna pretend this soap is our skin, like our arm or our leg, it's the skin on our body, the outer layer of skin, our epidermis. Um, so we're gonna pretend that's this. This sandpaper, represents anything we touch in the day. So our clothes, uh, the table I'm on, anything that I touch on my face, on my body, anything this outer layer, the epidermis touches. 
So what do you think is going to happen when my skin touches something and I go across this coarse sandpaper? Go ahead and get their hypotheses. And then I'll demonstrate. So you just barely have to touch. You don't have to touch really hard. Um, and you may kind of faintly see what's happening there. And I'll show you in just a second. So you just go over it a few times. And then you'll see, well, I guess you can see pretty well, actually. Um, oh, the lighting goes off. But you can see there, um, it leaves this fine layer of little um, pieces of soap um, that have just come off very easily and onto the paper. This represents how we have an outer layer of our epidermis, our epidermis um, that's made of dead skin cells. These dead skin cells come off super easy from just barely touching, rubbing throughout our day. As they come off, what's cool about the skin is that underneath it's already creating new skin cells and new skin layers. So as the dead skin comes off, new skin replaces it. New skin cells replace it. That's how when we um, cut ourselves or hurt ourselves, it heals, it heals from the inside out um, as the new skin recreates and forms layers um, up above it. So that is how our skin is constantly recreating organ. It is the largest organ of our body. Um, and that's how when we have a sunburn, new skin is replaced. When babies are born, their skin kind of peels off. That's because new, more mature skin is forming underneath. Um, so it's a pretty cool active organ um, that we sometimes take for granted. So have fun talking about hearing and about your skin and have a good time.